What's up guys, it's finally here, the world's first QUAD <laughs> camera phone in the world, aka the Samsung Galaxy A9 2018. This is a completely different phone from the original Samsung Galaxy A9, which was the battery-centric phone that was released back in 2016. It's different for all the good reasons because this is world's first quad camera phone. It's time to put this phone to the test. This phone has more cameras on the back compared to any other phone out there on the market, more than the best of Samsung, which is the Galaxy Note 9. So I'm gonna be putting this phone up against the Note 9, the best of Samsung. How capable are these cameras? Are they really just a gimmick? We're gonna find that out in this video. So before we get into that, I'm gonna share with you guys my experience with this phone. So first up, design and build quality wise, this is like a lighter version of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Like the whole construction is very similar to the Note 9. If you look towards the bottom, the positioning for the speaker, the mic hole, the Type-C port, the headphone jack, as well as the antenna lines are very similar. Instead of getting aluminum on the side, you have the glossy finish like the Galaxy S8 family with the beautiful gloss on the back. So it is really a premium phone indeed. We have a fingerprint scanner on the back, which is incredibly fast. Four cameras on the side, it gives this phone a very unique look. Now the button placement on the Galaxy A9 2018 is way better than the Note 9 or any of their flagship phone because the Bixby is on the left, but the power key has been moved towards the right. And with all this time that I was using this phone, not once did I hit the Bixby key accidentally, which happens all the time on my Galaxy Note 9 because the volume rocker is all the way on the top and the Bixby key is at the bottom. So it's kind of hard to reach towards the volume rocker. And I always end up pressing the Bixby key, which is something that Samsung wants you to do. But with this phone, the big speed is on the left, whereas the power and volume rocker is on the right. It is very easier for my brain to understand the difference and hence, I don't have to worry about the accidental touches. Other than that, the display on this phone is pretty good. It's a Super AMOLED display with 1080p HD resolution. It's obviously not as sharp as the Galaxy Note 9, but it is a pretty sharp phone. Now, software-wise, like every other Samsung phone, it has Android 8.1 Oreo. You get all the flagship features, uh, but more than the flagship features because this phone actually has the navigation gesture system implemented already. This is something that is coming with one UI. This is something that you won't find on the Galaxy Note 9 or the S9 Plus as of yet. But with this phone, we already have it. So Samsung has a really, really nice navigation system. So basically, the navbar keys are changed into gestures. So middle one is the Home. This one is the multitasking tray and this one is the back key. Honestly guys, in my experience, it has been way better than the Google's navigation system. Now despite being the world's first quad camera phone, this phone is actually coming with a Snapdragon 660 processor and it's a decent chip. You can play games on this phone without any problem. It comes with six gigs of RAM, so you have enough memory for awesome multitasking. And it's very easy on the battery life as well, but still, I would have preferred something like a Snapdragon 770D processor on this one because competition wise, I mean, this phone is definitely behind with the internal stuff. But what about those cameras? We have the main 24 megapixel camera with f1.7 aperture. There's an eight megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 10 megapixel zoom lens, and also a five megapixel lens for that depth sensing. On paper, this phone can clearly do things that no other Samsung phone can do, including the Note 9. But let's see if that is really true or not. All right, so starting things off with a tree shot, uh, looking pretty good on the Galaxy A9, keeping up nice with the sharpness. And uh, now I took most of the pics in the scene optimizer mode, uh, which uses AI to enhance stuff. Uh, and I think that really is a game changer for Samsung phones in the future. Without that mode, the pics weren't that good or comparable to the Galaxy Note 9, which by the way, has the scene optimizer mode or AI on by default. Now. In this shot, uh, the scene optimizer making things attractive on the A9, but it lacks the sharpness which you can notice on the Note 9. A quick bright macro shot, uh, looking pretty sharp on both phones. Uh, where there's light, the A9 does good. Uh, an indoor light where coming, an indoor shot where the light is coming from the window, and uh, thanks to the scene optimizer, the A9 looks uh, very similar to the Note 9, uh, just not quite as sharp, but still it is doing 
pretty good outdoor shot where again uh, same things it's uh, losing in the sharpness game and uh, switching to the wide angle lens it lose the sharpness even more so you can only use the wide angle lens on this phone when there is enough light otherwise it doesn't look that good kind of like this here the a9 does really good i actually kind of like this on the a9 more uh, with the scene optimizer it worked really well and switching to the wide angle you can see we have more in the scene but it does suffer from less sharpness now a live focus comparison i like that a9 don't zoom in with live focus it's uh, doing pretty good here you got the ability to set the blur afterward which helps a lot and here it's doing better than the note if you look at the space the note 9 is kind of losing in that department also portrait mode does work on objects and here it's doing a very decent job another outdoor shot obviously the dynamic range isn't as good as the flagship a beautiful sky shot where it's uh, looking very good thanks to the scene optimizer popping the colors more compared to the note 9 which by the way has a little less aggressive scene optimizer now indoor is where you'll see major differences you get sharper image on the flagship that's where you get your money's worth here's an ultra low light shot you can see uh, the difference again in decent lighting it does hold up some night shots where we can see the a9 suffer from a lot of grain don't even think about using the wide angle lens at night because it feels like the picture is taken on a galaxy s2 and always remember a 24 megapixel selfie camera on a samsung mid-range phone is not better than the 8 megapixel that is found on their flagship phones and for the videos it can shoot 4k but it doesn't look detailed at all. You can't switch to the ultra wide angle mode while you are shooting the video and uh, it is pretty shaky because there is no optical image stabilization and considering at this price, I mean, it is pretty bad. And again, it suffers from loss of detail a lot. So overall, the Galaxy A9 Pro is more of a first phone. Like Samsung wanted to be the first to do the four cameras on the back. They wanted to jump on this bandwagon of having multiple cameras on the back they have certainly done it they are the first but it's definitely not the best execution and while i really like this phone it's really hard for me to recommend this at the price where samsung is selling so it is about 600 dollars which is a lot of money i mean you can get a used galaxy s9 plus at that price and also some of the other newer phones in this price range are offering much much more than what this phone is offering so again samsung uh, i have to say this is a good phone but a bad price this phone should get priced in between 400 to 450 dollars i mean at that price it definitely does look a lot appealing and it's gonna cause a lot of tension to the competitors but sadly this is a very expensive phone i would definitely love to see what samsung will do with their flagship triple camera setup that is coming with the galaxy s10 plus and quad camera setup that is coming with the galaxy s10 plus 5g version so i'm interested and excited for that anyway guys that was my full look of the samsung galaxy a9 2018 thank you so much for watching this video and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out